FBL Sports, where we review all the best sports clips from around the country. Now, you're probably wondering, why should I watch over here instead of over there? Because over there, they don't care about what you have to say. They say this all the time. They talk down to us. They don't read the comments. They think we're just a bunch of clowns on YouTube, Twitter, but I think it's the opposite. I think we know exactly what we're talking about. So I read every single comment. So if you think what I'm saying is the most ridiculous thing you've ever heard, let me know in the comments below. If you think what I'm saying is amazing, then also please definitely let me know. Either way, let's get into some discussions. Let's get into some fights, but ultimately let's just have some fun. And also please do consider subscribing. We are building an amazing community here so far, and it's turning into something truly, truly special. I want to build something that we really genuinely feel connected to, something that we're really proud to be part of and that we can't wait to check out, you know, every single day. And I really think we're well on our way to doing it. So please do consider subscribing. So without further ado, let's get to it. Talking about first things first, um, um, you know, how scary will Tyreek be in his return? Um, before I hit play, let me just say before anyone else says, this game is a little tricky to gauge because of how cold it's supposed to be, like maybe the coldest game ever, or like the second most coldest NFL game ever. And so I don't know how a team necessarily plans for that personally i know what's done what's happened historically but i'm talking about in 2024 right i mean it's just a different game go watch a game from 1998 and it's just you're just like shocked at how different of a game it is um and so i'm just saying like right now especially also it also depends on who's on the teams right like these other teams that played in freezing cold weather didn't necessarily have like a tyreek hill or a tua or mahomes or this that and the third so this game is going to be interesting and unique for a couple of reasons. Um, but Tyreek Hill is the absolute, absolutely the big, gigantic question mark and wild card. I imagine, and this is my guess, they're going to want to get the ball with Ty in Tyreek's hands as much as possible. The problem is Ty Tyreek in the more recent year is, is banged up. Like, he, you know, he's always kind of like hobbled a little bit or it always feels like, oh my God, is, is he done? Did he pull a hamstring? Like what's going on? Kind of reminds me of AJ Brown. Like they're, they just always kind of look like kind of achy. So that could change things. And as a coach, you know that. You, as a staff, you know that. You know if your player, Tyreek, is really only like 80% and he's kind of laboring something, even if it's not necessarily written down in the books. Um, so, you know, and, and that's going to change your calling, right? Like you're going to try to preserve that a little bit. And again, I'm not saying that's necessarily the case. I'm just saying that's what makes these things kind of a little bit harder to predict. Um, but cause there was a couple key, key plays against, um, the bills last week and he wasn't in, you know, and, and he was kind of like belabored. So that could stop what I'm about to say, but I think that it'll, it is with, with Tyreek Hill, it's going to be reminiscent of what the 49ers did with D, um, Debo um, a couple year, a few years ago, I think when they made it to the Super Bowl and went up against Patrick Mahomes. At this point, you know that was a few years ago, so I don't remember exactly how it all. But I remember like Debo came on the seed and he was like doing things that not a lot of people saw. Right, he's this wide receiver, but he's like running and he's like kind of like a running back. He's like doing all this type of stuff, and you're just like, oh my god what is this? And I just remember it was just like, you know, they didn't have a tremendous amount of confidence like in a Jimmy Garoppolo. And it was really just like, get the ball to the playmaker in the playmaker's hands and let's go. And I feel as though, and you know, similar coaching styles, right? With Shanahan and McDaniel and stuff. So I think they're going to, they're going to get fancy against the Chiefs. Because I just don't think you're going to be able to just grind it out and just be like, it's freezing, it's cold. We're just going to put our head down, hand the ball off, and just let's go. I just don't know if that's going to happen. But again, I don't know what it's like to play in that type of weather when it's going to be that cold. Is the ball just dead and heavy as a rock? And it's like, that's all you can do is just, you know, short little passes and occasionally air it out. You know, I just don't know. And then does the game turn into one of those things where it's just like, who can just get one big play, right? One team is going to, you know, take a chance and throw the ball downfield, really. And they either catch it or they don't, right? And it's like, that could be the difference of the game right there. You know, that's happened plenty of times um, in, in, in the past. So that's what makes it kind of tricky. But I just think they're going to want to get the ball to Tyreek in open space and say, go do you. Like, I really think it's going to be like, win us the game. I think they're having a big conversation with Tyreek and saying, you need to win us this game. If we are going to have any chance at beating the Chiefs, you have to win us this game. And I think they're going to go into Tua and they're saying, Tua, 
we're going to minimize mistakes, okay? Do not feel like you have to win this game. Do not put the weight on your shoulders that you need to just drop back. And, you know, what they're obviously calling on to, and they're obviously going to say, Tua, we need you, let's play. I don't want to, you know, get it twisted. But they're not going to put all that weight and say, this is all on you, Tua. You got to win us this game. But I do believe the honest conversations that they're having with the Tyreek Hill is like, you you we can't afford to have a game where you only have like 80 yards from from the line of scrimmage you know it's just not going to happen so i think that's where tyreek then is like you know he's just gonna lay it all out there um and i think he's a pretty good person for doing that because i don't think he lets his emotions get the best of him necessarily he's obviously like a high energetic person but it, it doesn't seem like you really get in his head as much as maybe some of these other more like outspoken wide receivers i um, jet sweeps for sure. See, that's I'm what I was saying. Like the ball in his hands, he's the, one of the scariest players in league history. He's one of the most dynamic players in league history. I think these conditions in particular. See, that's what they did with Debo and 49ers all these years. That, that's what I'm trying to say. Just getting the ball in his hands and saying, go do. I didn't watch this clip prior, so that's just funny. Plus Tyreek ha already had an ankle injury. Two or three him that hospital ball that seemed to result in the quad injury, which popped up on the injury report. He didn't fully practice all week. It's going to be tough conditions. So I don't think the conditions are, I would be, if you were somehow playing Tyreek Hill in the Super Bowl in a dome in perfect weather, he'd be the scariest player on the field. I think in this game, he's as unscary, that's not the word I apologize, as Tyreek Hill can be, which is still somewhat scary. But the point that I that I was saying earlier in the week, and I think you're seeing it here, It, you're not hearing the same type of comments you've heard from Tyreek. Oh, that's a good point. You called at that. At any point. At Tyreek, you know, right when he got there, most accurate quarterback mm -hmm. ever. This season, best offense I've ever been a part of. Going into the first game, you're going to get that work. Heard none of it right now. I do think some of the confidence has been stripped away from this Dolphins offense from even one of the most confident players, mm. righteous, righteously confident, no. in league history in Tyree Kill. That's not what that is. I get it, but that's not what it is. Players like that, um, who then just kind of throw out that confidence, um, they're either just pumping themselves up or they're kind of delusional. And so if you're delusional, then you kind of continue to be delusional. Um, and that's what I'm saying. I don't think Tyreek Hill's that. Also, he's matured a little bit. You know what I mean? He has. Um, you know, you're now talking about what he said, like, you know, well over a year ago. Um, and you do a lot of maturing. And again, you just don't know what type of lessons and what type of things that the coaching staff and that they're preaching to a Tyreek Hill. So I don't think he's scared or he's not confident. That's why he's not saying some things that he's said. I think he also knows of the trap of saying, I'm going to come here and beat, you know, the chiefs and stuff like that. You know, I, I, I think he, he's aware because now he's a, he's a seasoned vet at this point. So I don't think the lack of talking of those types of confident statements has anything to do with him losing confidence. I think that's a stretch and you're just making that up. If you think someone like a Tyreek Hill is losing confidence there's just no way they lost by a touchdown to the bills okay who's the number two seed they almost beat the bills who's the number two seed who's better than the chiefs so let's not pretend that the that the you know that the dolphins think that they have no chance at winning it's just not it's just not true i think he's confident in himself he's just realized i mean we are what we are which is a pretty good team a finesse team and we're not going to beat the big boys all right, I think that's all it is. I don't think he's wistful. Sure, everybody would love to keep playing for Super Bowls and all that. But individually, as I said, individually, he's gotten more recognition and shine. Not that he didn't get any in Kansas City, but he's gotten more in, in Miami. We weren't ever talking about him as an MVP candidate mm -mm. in Kansas City. We weren't ever even talking about him as a top five receiver. That's, can I ask you a question? Yeah. I didn't mean to interrupt you. I apologize. No. Um, okay, let's just... So now that he's gotten that, do you think if he could orchestrate a trade back there this offseason, he would? Because I do. And like, now that he's gotten it, 
It's like, hey, I'm great even without them, and I got my contract. I would think I, that, so. That I would, uh, and I understand it's the I weather and all so. that. I, I, and so that's, I would, yeah, if that, I were him. That, that's yeah, I no wouldn't question. do it for $17 million. Right. If, it, it depends on the money. No, like, his contract's already there. I'm drop. saying his contract is already signed. Oh, like, would you rather play for the Chiefs, of course? Yeah, absolutely. I think he right, always but, wanted to play for the Chiefs. But that's, the, I guess my point is, that is, we're all saying that now. I don't think that was the conventional wisdom Week five. He, here's what I Week I'll five, say. it was this is the best offense. Tua might win MVP. Tyreek's going to have 2,000 yards. Mm. Right? Like, I, I mean, that was. That, that, that's some where people, we were at. I mean, I, I, look, I don't think he made a mistake. I'm not saying he made a mistake. Yeah, I, I think he did the right thing. Go get your money. You've got your Super Bowl. Now you're actually doing better individually. As far as should they be scared of him? No. And I, look, I, I'm big on this. You guys obviously know this. Uh, how you do against the best teams. All right, everybody can go out there and score 30 against. The Pistons, you even handicap the games against the Pistons, yeah, right? Yeah. So, against the great teams, Tyreek has two touchdowns in six games against playoff teams. No games over 100 yards. I'm not saying Tyreek can't get it done against these good teams. Mm -hmm. I'm saying good teams know how to defend him better. And it's on Tua. Two yeah. or more so than Tyreek, and so no, and especially under these conditions. And though, we shouldn't. He's not going to be. That we scary. shouldn't move past this conversation without going past, without mentioning the name of Pro Bowl and All Pro snub Legarius Sneed, who has done better than any player in the league at stopping the opposing team's number one receivers throughout the year. The only number one receiver that had anything close to their regular performance was. God dog it. I, I think it was Devontae Adams in the second game or maybe the first game, whatever it was. Everyone else he has slowed down. And so you have you have him on the outside and an actual all-pro corner, yeah. Trent McDuffie, in the <coughs> slot. So the Chiefs are, you know, they traded away Tyreek, and the first-round pick they used was a guy who's now an all-pro in the secondary who might be matched up on Tyreek at times with safety help. I, the Chiefs are just set up better than almost any team in the league to so deal with him. Yeah. Uh, Patriots have executed. Uh, well, I think, again, the Chiefs obviously have a great defense, right? Like, that's that's undeniable. Um, that's why I just think, though, that this game and this weather is going to put such a wrench in the game planning. And you're then also banking on um, uh, McDaniel to pull some magic. Uh, he, he did when he had a backup quarterback last season. You know, so you're also trying to see what type, you know, if we say that him as an offensive coordinator and a head coach is an offensive genius, right? That's what the words we use, you know, with him, uh, McDaniel, that is, you know, like Shanahan, like a McVay, like an Andy Reid, we say offensive genius. Um, it's just like, well, then what are you going to draw up? You know, what do you have? You now poured over the tape of probably every single Chiefs game. You saw, you know, you looked at the game in London or Germany, wherever the heck they were. You know, you looked at that. You see this. You know, what What do you see? What can you do? How can you unlock Tua? How can you unlock Tyreek? And how can you unlock, you know, any of your other players? So I think that's also what it kind of comes down to as well. So I'm really interested to see what he can do because I think we'll learn a lot about, a couple things. We're going to learn about how much confidence do the Dolphins have in Tua, um, how good McDaniel is, you know, and three, um, how resilient the Dolphins are, you know, because if you're down by 10 going into the second half in a brutally freezing game, do they still have what it takes to kind of come back from that, right? You know, because I could easily see this. If it's really that bad and the weather is really that brutal and it's just so hard to move the ball, I could easily see it being some like weird, you know, score of like 10, 10 to 3, 10 nothing going into halftime, right? And everyone's just freezing and tired already. And you're just like, you know, so I don't think what people realize is that when the weather is that cold or just the weather is extreme in any type of way, you get mentally fatigued more because you're putting so much energy into like, you know, either trying to do your best not to think about the weather or it's just more mentally fatiguing as well. I played in brutally freezing games and also. Um, like pouring rain games and stuff. And it's just like, you're just more mentally fatigued because you're just like, you know, your your mind is reminding you, what the heck is this? What the heck is this? Oh my God. Oh my God. This is absurd. This is absurd. This is absurd. And you know, you just can't get warm. You just can't get dry, you know, like what whatever it is. And so that that's what happens. And so when it is halftime and you get some warmth now, you're like, oh my God, I just want this to be over. Now, granted, 
I never played in terrible weather um, in the NFL playoffs where I'm at halftime, right? So I'm sure it's going to be a little bit more of an energy, not to mention, you know, a lot of my uh, halftimes, you just stayed outside for the most part or like, you know, underneath like a, like a, not a tent, but, you know, some like overhang thing. Um, so it all, you know, so it, it really all depends, um, you know, where you're at and stuff. But I think, um, I think this is going to be a more interesting game than people expect and maybe i'm just hoping that and i because i just want the excitement you know because i just can't wait for the playoffs so maybe i'm trying to speak it into existence i don't know but it just feels this feels like a game that could be more special than people are giving credit to but i don't know you know maybe patrick mahomes really does just prove just to be an absolute monster but you know like i said before even if he does miami dolphins their defense is so depleted so hurt so banged up and the offense seems that, you know, this weather might be hard for them to do what makes them special. And that's the, and that's the thing. This is the last thing I'll say with regards to this. And this is what happened with the Eagles. I'm not making excuses for the Eagles about the Super Bowl last season. But you have to be able to follow this. If you can't follow this, I don't know what to tell you. Okay. Part of what made the Eagles special last year was their pass rush, okay, right, they were leading the team, they were like almost going to maybe set the record for most sacks, I mean, like, they were unstoppable, they were unstoppable, okay, now the field in the Super Bowl was undeniably bad, I mean, like, ask you, they had the retired grounds crew there, I mean, like, they were like, it, that's a that's a real thing that happened, the entire defense, I think the entire football team in general changed their cleats. The Eagles weren't suddenly making up excuses. They never made excuses the whole season. They were obviously so uncomfortable that that's what happened. So it, this is a real thing. And I'm not saying this is like such an excuse and I'm not still crying about it. I don't think about it at all. I don't. So save those comments. I don't need to hear them. I really don't. But follow this with me. It did affect their ability to do the, for the pass rush. They don't have, they didn't have their feet from underneath them. Tom Brady has said he likes playing in poor weather and in the snow and slippery conditions because it's easier for the offense to succeed than the defense because the offense knows where they're going and where they're playing, you know, what, you know, what route they're running. And so it's, so they're doing these more controlled runs. So it's easier to do. The defense is trying to like figure out where to go. So it's easier to slip and have your footing. That is the king to go Tom Brady saying that. So this is a real thing. So they took away what made the Eagles special part a big part of what made them special. They, and because people say, well, look, you know, the chiefs had to play on that field too, but their pass rush, what made the Chiefs special was not their ability to get to the quarterback and sack. That's what the Eagles did the best in the NFL that, that season, last season. That's what they were the elite. That's what made them so freaking good and really great on defense was that pass rush. So when you take away that pass rush, they can no longer do what kind of made them special, which then now not made them as good as they could be. It's kind of a similar thing that could potentially happen with the Dolphins. Um, so much of what makes them special is their speed and spreading the field and having, you know, a Tyreek Hill, you know, just go long like it's backyard football, right? Go long and I'm just going to launch it to you like those types of plays. And if the weather is so bad and it makes that impossible, now any of the things that make the Dolphins special that give the Dolphins a chance against a good defense gets neutralized. And so now it makes them look even worse than they really are, or, you know, just not as good as they really are. Um, so that's my thoughts on it. That'll probably, probably be my last video leading into the playoffs. So let's see how well this one ages. I have no idea, but let me know what you all think. Let me know in the comments below. I would absolutely love to hear your thoughts. Um, and please don't forget to subscribe. We are building an amazing community here, and I truly would love to see you part of it. And please give this video a thumbs up as it really helps the visibility and the algorithm. Thank you so much, and see you next time.